Right, I filmed a mega test using loads of launch monitors in my garden to show you how to make the best home sim. Prices on everything, you're going to see things like this popping up, which is rating everything out of five on loads of different categories. It give you the best idea which one might be best for your garden and course and maybe indoor sim. This was a mega test. This has taken months to test all these. Let's cut straight to the chase. If you want to find out my overall ratings for these devices, they are here. These are my overall rating for these devices. I'm going to go into depth to explain why I got to these ratings. Remember, the overall rating doesn't mean it's the best for you because some of these will include if you use a laptop or not, which some of you might not want to. But if you want to just find out which one is best, there it is, bang, straight away. Now, the space I put these in was my back garden, which I've also got a pattern green on. You can see the space is not big to give you an idea of the limited amount of space you can still do this in so that is the size of the space i'm putting my backyard sim in and all of these launch monitors and nets and mats fit in this space so let's kick this off with the net that i use this is a common question i get i uh, tested two different nets i tested the sky track net they sent me theirs and i also tested the sim space enclosures net as well and what was interesting is these nets were exactly the same i couldn't believe it when i unboxed them they were exactly the same the sim space one had instructions the sky track one didn't it was very simple to put up the net comes with sides if you're scared of shanking it or hitting it offline I use my side so the puppy doesn't run in front of me when I'm filming or if I'm practicing sometimes. But generally, I don't have the sides out if I'm clear and I, I, I'm not going to miss the net personally. The net is big. It's a large expanse, very high as well, which I like not going over this net at all. You have to think about how far back you are from it. Obviously, a lob wedge could go over it, but I'm close enough for that not to go over. Put some sandbags at the back to stop it blowing over, and it's a good, solid net. I would have this in my garden and feel very comfortable if people came along and hit shots who, like say my kids wanted to hit a shot, I would just bring the sides out, and I felt safe and secure that we weren't going to hit any neighbor's gardens with golf balls. I also tested three mats as well. So two from the Sim Space Enclosures website. Codes on all these products will be coming up as you go. If you want discount codes, save money, use my discount codes, look into descriptions, which products have the discount codes on. It's nearly all of them. So I had the tea turf mat. This is a mat you can just simply put a golf tee in. You don't need any holes. You just put the tee into it. It's a thicker pile. That one for me, I'm not such a fan of for hitting irons off. The Skytrack mat was the same as this one as well. They were basically the same mat, I felt. Um, put T straight in it. It's a thicker pile. It feels a little bit like you're hitting from semi-rough. I do know most amateurs that I teach prefer this to the mat that I preferred, which was the standard hitting mat where you would have to put a T up through a hole in the bottom of it, which I also like because it doesn't move around. But that one comes with a not such a thick pile, so it feels more like a clean good lie i know when i get amateurs on these two mats they always prefer the thicker pile because it sits up it tees it up a little bit all i notice when you use launch monitors and you collect any data is the spin can drop down a little bit on these thicker piled mats because the ball will hit generally that little bit higher on the face which will reduce spin something to bear in mind all the mats were good it wouldn't bother me which one i used if i had the choice which i did for me, I like the standard hitting mat from the sim space enclosures. So mat, net, in place, ready to hit. How can I measure where the ball's going? How can I work on feels? Let's get into the launch monitors. So let's kick this off with the Swing Speed Radar. I own one of these devices. I bought it when I bought or I got a stack system for testing. It's how I did my stack swing speed training. And it worked really well because the stack system works this device into its app. Now, this device is going to just simply measure club head speed. That's what it's going to do. It's a bat and club Doppler radar system. It comes in at a really reasonable cost if you want to get something in your garden that's going to measure club head speed. You can see it's scored really high for setup. It's literally you turn it on, plonk it opposite the ball and off you go. And for swing speed training, it's decent. Like it's doing a decent job for the price. Portability as well, it's scored pretty high because obviously you could just bung this in your bag and you could do your training wherever you do it in the garden, take it to the course, take it to the driving range. It scores very low on other things, doesn't connect to apps apart from stack system obviously you have to get a stack system swing speed 
system uh, to, to use that with an app. It doesn't come with any app. It's got the display on it, so it registers what uh, speed you're moving at in front of you. Accuracy was fine. It's not the most consistent. I think for the price, if you're wanting to start a speed journey, this is perfect. If you want to hit a few shots of it and check some speeds, I wouldn't hang my hat on what it delivers, but it does give you some basic numbers. It, as you can see, if you're going to do this as your garden sim setup, it comes in at a really good cost, so it would score that well. It's just not going to do much of what the other ones can do, but it's a great base entry level radar system. Next off is the Stack Radar. This is a reasonable price in this category. Again, it comes in at a nice, good price and it delivers a few more numbers. We're getting clubhead speed, we're getting ball speed, we're getting carry distance as well, smash factor also. So it's allowing you now to actually dial in distances and speeds. You can use this for speed training as well. This does allow you to hit shots in your net and have some ability to build scores. It's actually one of the radars of all of them. I do just levitate to because you turn it on, you set the club you want to use, you can connect it to the stack app if you want an app, but there's a screen showing you how far the ball's gone, how fast you've swung. Now I can see how far my eight iron's going, dial in my wedges, I can dial in in between shots with irons, practice hitting top end clubs as well, measuring speeds, try swinging faster, try swinging slower, it's going to be measured. And the accuracy for the price, it scores pretty good for how much this costs. Yeah, it's not going to be the most accurate machine out there because of the cost, but it's certainly accurate enough for me to levitate to this one a lot. Portability scores super high, this device is tiny, fits in your bag, fits in your pocket. I take it on the course to confirm that what I'm doing out on the course reflects what I do in the net at home. And I love that feature across the same machine, same device. Set up on this score as well as well. It's simply turn it on, plonk it down, off you go. Build quality of this and the swing speed radar is good. You can bung these in the bag. You're not going to be precious about these machines. As we go up through the list, you're going to find that some of them maybe are not as robust for moving around in different situations but taking it from the garden to the course, to the practice area, back to the garden, it does really move freely between those places without having to protect it and be precious about it too much. This is one of my noticeable mentions. I do like this machine. The Garmin R10 is one of the most impressive devices, home use, garden, backyard sim, and other places on the list. It's clever. So the price, it's middle range, but you're getting a lot for this money. Packaging and build quality is good. It comes in a nice hard case to help you move it around. It's a bit big and bulky, even though the machine itself is actually really small. When I take this away from my garden, if I take it out onto the course, I do take the case, but if I had a carry bag on my shoulders, I wouldn't. I would try and put it in my bag safely, maybe wrap it in something. Setup is super easy. You do now have to connect to an app. There's nothing coming out of the device itself. So there is a little bit of app setting up, which is super easy. But if you compare it to stack, like say if I'm playing on the golf course, so I want to take my garden sim numbers to the golf course, I can plomp it down. People around me on the course aren't even going to notice I've stopped to do anything. With R10, you are going to set up, connect to your app, have your phone out. It takes a little bit longer. But in a garden fixed position or a garden sim where you take it out every morning and bring it out when you're using it because you don't want to leave it out in the rain, it takes seconds to set up. Like, it's easy. We're now connecting to an app and the app punches like it delivers. So what does the Garmin R10 measure? It measures all these things here. So it's measuring a lot. There are tolerances. It says on the website, the tolerances on the measurements of what it is saying it's measuring. So some are good, some are slightly out, but the, the accuracy of this device, I was quite impressed with. Of all the mid-range ones, it shoots up there as a good one for accuracy. You now also can record swings. So you can apply the data to a video recorded swing. It comes with a little clip that you can clip onto your bag to put your iPhone on or your whatever device you have to allow you to record swings which you can then play back and watch and you've got the data on the screen as well which is clever like this one really does start giving you a garden sim garden practice area because we've also got loads of games and we've got courses you can now start playing golf courses at home and they're decent and good and a lot of fun the thing with this app and this device is it's fun 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 if you compare it to something like stack stack is more golf serious like if you're really serious about what you're doing and you want to move it around places this one is that 
but with a big layer of fun on as well. So if friends come around and you want to have fun in the garden, you've got kids who want to have fun with it, you can do it with this device. You can't do swing speed training with this device yet. There has been rumbles that they might introduce it. It must be able to measure it, but it scored really low for that. Apart from that, its overall rating is good. And this is a real lookout system for anyone who wants the garden sim. Then we'll take a look at the flight scope Mevo. Again, this is one I do levitate to. Set up super easy, kick the stand out, turn it on, connects to an app. So again, nothing on the device and you're ready to go. I definitely can move this one around without any real case. The build quality, it feels more substantial. Say so to R10 does feel like you could maybe crack it, bang it if you're moving it around. This one feels a little bit more sturdy. It does a few more limitations to what R10 does though. R10 does do more, but I just love that this one's delivering pretty good accurate data for the money, super easy to set up and you can use it anywhere. So in my garden, take it to the range, take it to the course it is seamless. You do still have the app issue if you take it to the course. So that's why the, again, the stack radar for me just comes through if I'm gonna blend it with the course a lot. No subscriptions with this one as well. So that does put some people off where Garmin R10, there is some subscription options if you want all those features. So it's going super high in portability if you are gonna move it around, put it in garden, take it away. It scores really high for accuracy for its price as well. It does very well, like the R10 did also. You can do swing speed training with it also, so it's doubling up as another device. And also you can record your swings, play them back, get the data over your swings as well, which I do think is a good fun feature for that home sim. No gaming with this one though, you're not going to be playing golf courses. There are a few training protocols you can do in the apps, which are also very good. Again, slightly more serious device, I would say, but solid and just really reliable. Swing Caddy SC4. Standout feature for this for me is you can connect it to an app and you can game, you can film your swing and get data overload. They're all fine like the other ones, but the standout feature for this is it has a display on board. You can just turn your head and look at the, da the data as you hit shots. And I wish some of the other devices would start trying to bring that in. I think that is so valuable in a garden sim situation. The reason being, sometimes I just want to go out, I've got, you know, sometimes I'm barbecuing out there and I should be doing the food, but I want to eat a few wedges, okay? I don't want to have to connect to an app. It's so obvious that I'm kind of sneaking in some golf time. With this one, you can whack it down, turn it on, hit a shot, and it's going to display the data straight away. It's instant feedback. And I do love that with these machines. I wish more of them would do it. That's the standout feature for me. This device is bigger bulkier you have to select club i like the on-screen display as i've just said you can play golf courses with it you can overlay your swing on it the accuracy was okay i would say r10 and mevo were definitely a little bit more accurate taking this to the course on the practice range is super easy again you can just you kick the stand back you sit it down turn it on point it in the direction and off you go you can connect the app or not if you want that's what makes it super easy to use it on the course as well to confirm you're doing what you are at home out on the course which i think is a really important aspect of having a garden sim is that you can move the device into different spaces you do get club head speed but you don't get any face or path or angle of attacks anything like that it's ball data and club head speed it's a really Really good solid device i think it's 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 competing in a very busy field with mevo and garmin r10 for me i think those two come above this device but the fact that you have the onboard display for some of you might be a killer as well i do love that with this machine then another little jump up in price to the wrap sodo this is the worst named of all of them this is the mlm2 pro always have to read that i can never remember the name of this device now the build quality comes in a little box is good very quick and easy to set up i like the fact it's on a little tripod as well because it gets it up off out of the grass some of the other ones when you're in long grass like mevo if the grass is a bit long you maybe want a little tripod for it if you're taking it to the course if you've got any kind of lips or anything on your where you're going to hit at home at your garden sim you might need again pop it on a little box things like that the fact this comes on a little tripod i think is great set up super easy plonk it down turn it on you do connect to an app again nothing on the actual launch monitor itself it's all going to come through a device all the data that you get and the data is good there's lots of it you also get two cameras with this one so there's a camera on the doppler radar so it's camera and radar 
which gives you impact, which is a pretty cool feature to be fair. And you also then can set your camera up on your phone as well. So you can get two camera angles, which is very clever. The Rapsodo definitely packs itself with loads of good features. You can game with this one also. It's gonna give you some pretty good reliable data. When it comes to club data, it's only club head data that it gives you. So you can see it scores pretty low on the club data reading, which knocks this one down slightly and it's over rating. But that's again, if you, this is why these ratings are here. If you're not after club head data, you don't care about that, then it will put it up pretty high because it scored well in most categories. There are a few subscriptions depending on what features you want. And I know that does upset a few people. They're not into subscriptions. I get all that. But the features, the gaming, the easiness to set up, the reliability of this product, the two cameras was good. I thought this was an all round punching device and it does feel that Rapsodo are just going to continuously push forward like they're very good at releasing new exciting features that other devices don't so I think buying into their ecosystem is quite a positive forward step now we jump up to the beefier models these models start touching and joining that elite class, so the GC quads and the Trackmans, those kind of things. So we're looking at Flightscope Mevo Plus first. This device, to be fair, has shocked me at how good it is, subject to what subscriptions you put on top of it. Out of the box, it comes with loads of decent uses, but there are ways of upgrading it to get it basically to a pretty much a professional unit, which is unbelievable. So packaging and build quality of this really good comes in a nice little case. It feels solid. It feels easy to move around, even though it is now a much more expensive device where you might be a bit more nervous of moving this around. It doesn't. It feels very, very portable. Connects to an app on a PC which is professional, like what I would teach with, also on your mobile devices as well. We now start getting ball data and club data that is unparalleled, like it's up there with the best. You can get strike, you're subject to what subscriptions, strike, angle of attack, face the path, path, everything you want and the way it displays the club data is super impressive also i mean i think it displays the club data better than my gc quad that i teach with the app is packed with very fun but also professional practice skills kind of challenges that you can do you can use this for putting you can use it for swing speed training i mean this is an all device this is a device that you're going to use in your garden sim you can play golf courses you can practice your putting with it you can hit really hard shots really soft shots it's going to register everything and the accuracy is good it's portable so you can then take this to the range taking it to the course you could do again but you're setting it up with an app it's more faddy to do that again that's why stack radar for me for crossing over between course and garden sim is perfect i mean i would have this as my garden sim strike swing gaming dialing in balls everything and then i would use stack and take that to the course obviously i might have the last one as well as my garden sim which is the sky track plus which we're coming to and as an overall rating this did score the highest because it ticks every box again when we look at sky track plus you're going to see why this one scored the highest and where that might not be what you base your decisions on because it's subject to what you want always like if you're not going to speed train this you don't need this device if you're not going to look at strike, you don't need to spend this money. You can capture your swing on this as well. So as in via the app, you can get dual angles of your swing with a couple of devices. You can set up two cameras. You can put overlays of the golf ball going on like you see on telly as well. Like this machine does everything. If you were really in the market for a home sim, garden sim, outdoor sim, this is getting close to being perfection. And finally, Sky Track. Plus, out of all the devices I've tested over the months, Skytrack Plus just continuously surprises me how powerful it is. So the reason you're going to see that this one doesn't score the highest on everything is because it doesn't do swing speed training, so it gets zero. You can't capture video of your golf swing and overlay it with the data, so it scores zero for that. So two of the categories it scores zero and it still shoots up pretty high. So if you're not after those things, 
then it's probably the best out there. Other things it's lacking in is portability. You're not going to take this to the course. You could take it to the range, easy moving it in and out of the garden. It's super light, small, you plonk it down and off you go. Like the setup's super easy, plonk it down. Sits to the side of the ball as well, which I think is quite important because if you are limited with any space behind you, this one's using less space. So it's closer to you. So you could, I could basically be a meter off the back of my mat at the most and I've got enough space. But the build quality of the device is professional. The software is fantastic. You can game the gaming on this software that has just been released. Again, there's subscriptions for some of this is fantastic like as good as top end devices the optimizer in the numbers so i can hit a shot and it'll tell me if i'm optimizing that club for those numbers is so clever animation as it goes down the screen really good i would say the computer and the app on the ios devices are that of top end machines like it, it, this is as good as it gets you're getting ball data, which is great and accurate. You're getting plenty of club data, which is usable and accurate. It's got brilliant practice resources as well. You can set flags. It tells you your standard deviations. Like it gives you everything that top end machines do and a little bit more, which just, just blow me away. It definitely feels at the moment that Skytrack have got a team of people who totally understand what this space is about from pros who use it to amateurs who are going to use it, to shops that might fit with it. Like, they get all the different things that people need. Again, the only thing I wish it had is a display on the top to show me some of the numbers so I didn't have to connect to an app. With that, at both of these top-end devices, that's a shame that you do always have to connect to an app. Sometimes you do just want to plonk it out there, bang, turn it on. That's where something like GC Quad that I teach with is so great. That's what you see the tour pros using that. Just plonk it down on the course, turn it on, bang, off you go. And I was just shocked with the accuracy of this device. Like, I don't see much difference between this and my quad. The accuracy is just, it's not questionable. It is just solid. So for me, in the top end one, it's a hard pick between Mevo Plus and Skytrack. I think Skytrack slightly takes over because it sits next to the ball. It's a little easier to set up. You do have a tilt option on the... Uh, Mevo Plus, so setting it up is a little bit sometimes if you're not on a level, but it's fine. For me, I think Skytrack is my favorite. If, if price is not an issue, you're not going to take it to the course. You are going to put it in the garden, bring it out, take it to the garden, maybe take it to the range. Skytrack, because of the power of its software, is so... Well, it's, uh, it blew me away. There you go, Garden Sims. I think there's something there for everyone. Backyard Sims, what do you call it? Let me know in the description or in the comments down below. There's definitely great options out there these days. This world is moving fast. It's got so much better than when I last tested um, these devices or started looking at them years ago. They were a bit far away where now they're really starting to get serious. And that gap between top end and consumer is closing super quick. There is so many things you can do in your garden that would help you play better golf. Any of these devices do their bits. Remember, if you want discount codes on any of these products, they've been coming up there down below as well. Most of them I've reviewed have discount codes. If they don't, we've got links for them to go and check them out. Uh, helps the channel, supports the channel. Loads more coming on these devices. If you want to see me do any direct comparisons between the, any of the two in these lists, let me know in the comments down below and we'll get them punching out together. So not only can you get the best price for these devices, but also get the best one for you. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.